arrival at the fluoroscopy suite, the room is prepared and the patient is transferred onto the fluoroscopy table using safe manual handling techniques. The patient must be placed in the supine position. The two registered nurses assisting during the procedure need to communicate and clarify their individual roles and responsibilities prior to commencement, assess oxygen saturations when lying flat, and administer oxygen if required. All staff involved in the procedure must agree and understand their procedural role. All clinicians involved must attend timeout and complete the Level 3 Clinical Procedure Safety Checklist. The only exception to this is if it is a life-threatening emergency situation. Radiation safety needs to be maintained by all staff during the procedure. The Advanced Life Support Nurse is responsible for continuously monitoring the patient. It is recommended that a complete set of observations is documented every 15 minutes at a minimum. If there is any change in the patient's cardiac rhythm, the doctor must be made aware immediately. Passing the wire through the heart may induce ectopic beats. Ensure medications are easily accessible. Atropine should be drawn up and readily available. Once the wire is in position, the medical officer will ask the ALS nurse to take the end of the pacing wire and attach it to the bridging cable, ensuring the electrodes are positioned positive to positive and negative to negative. The proceduralist will order initial output, rate and sensitivity. Some repositioning of the wire may be required for optimal pacing parameters to be found. On completion of the procedure, prior to leaving fluoroscopy, the ALS nurse needs to perform a threshold check with the proceduralist. This will check the output required to pace, confirming the wire is positioned correctly. The ALS nurse is responsible for documenting all pacing settings, including the pacing threshold and sensitivity and for printing a baseline rhythm strip from the life pack. To reduce the risk of infection, temporary pacing wires must be inserted using a sterile technique. The procedural nurse's responsibility is to set up the sterile field and then open any requested equipment by the proceduralist. The procedural nurse will open the packs of the sterile gown and gloves for the medical officer and assisting with gowning and gloving as necessary. This role also involves assisting in the drawing up of medications as required. Once the medical officer is happy with the positioning of the leads and settings, the procedural nurse will apply a clear occlusive dressing to the exit site. The team is responsible for discarding all waste, including the safe disposal of sharps. When the patient is being transferred back to the bed, one nurse is responsible for the safe handling and securing of the pacing box and leads. The leads must be visible at all times and not in a position where disconnection may occur. The ALS nurse needs to accompany the patient back to the ward with the medical officer. A clinical handover must be attended when the patient is back in their bed space. As soon as possible, a 12-lead ECG must be obtained to establish a baseline of the paced rhythm morphology. The set pacing heart rate may need to be temporarily increased to obtain this recording. A chest x-ray should also be attended to assess the lead position. Mm -hmm.